Hello there. Over the past year, futures trading has gained immense popularity among retail traders. The easy access to funded accounts has significantly increased the number of traders participating in the futures market. In today's video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about futures before diving in. But before we get started, if you find value in this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the content. Firstly, what exactly is futures trading? According to Schwab.com, comma, futures are a type of derivative contract that involves an agreement to buy or sell a specific commodity, asset, or security at a set future date for a predetermined price. Essentially, people are trading based on their future expectations of prices. In the futures market, you can trade a variety of things, including corn futures, gold futures, oil futures, soybean futures, cattle futures, and even S&P and NASDAQ futures, which will be our primary focus in this video. The key distinction between options and futures lies in the fact that if a futures contract is executed, you are obligated to buy the underlying asset. For example, if you're trading oil futures, I highly recommend not letting it exercise unless you want barrels of oil showing up at your front door. Now, the main way retail traders are engaging with futures is by trading S&P 500 futures, also known as E's, and NASDAQ 100 futures, known as Q. The S&P 500 futures move in sync with the S&P 500 SPY, and similarly, the NASDAQ 100 futures move in sync with the NASDAQ QQQ. If you're familiar with trading SPI options, the movements are essentially the same. However, futures and options differ significantly. When trading SPY or QQ options, you're buying a strike price, a call or a put, and you're making gains based on the delta for every dollar. For instance, if there's a 0 0.04 delta and SPY moves in your favor by dollar one, you'll make dollar 40 on your contract. It's crucial to understand these dynamics. Unlike SPY or QQQ options, futures trading introduces other factors like theta, vega, implied volatility, and gamma. These factors play a significant role in your overall strategy and risk management. So as you venture into futures trading, keep these elements in mind to navigate the market successfully. Now let's delve into the key distinctions in futures trading. In futures, market movements are based on a point system. For example, in S&P 500 futures, for every one point the price moves in your favor, you make $50. Conversely, if it moves against you by one point, you incur a $1.50 loss. One significant difference is that in futures, you're either going long or short on the underlying asset, there's no buying of options involved. Let's say you go long at 4,500 and the price moves in your favor by two points, reaching 4,502. In this scenario, you'd profit $100. Conversely, if the price drops to $44.98, you'd incur a $100 loss. The key takeaway here is that you're making or losing $50 per point in S&P 500 futures. If that $50 per point seems a bit steep for you, consider trading the micros, where each point is worth $5. For instance, going long at 4,500 on the micros and witnessing a price increase to $4,505 would result in a $25 profit, or if it dropped, to $44.95, a $25 loss. The micros offer a more accessible entry point with $5 per point. Now let's talk about NASDAQ futures. If you're trading NASDAQ futures, it's worth noting that the market moves rapidly. It's like the Tesla of 2021. In NASDAQ futures, you stand to make or lose $1.20 per point. Given its swift movements at 20, 30-point shift is quite feasible. 
if you decide to go long at, let's say, 15,000 on the NASDAQ futures and experience a quick move to 15,020, you'd profit $1.400, 20 points multiplied by $1.20 per point. Conversely, if it drops to 14,980, resulting in a 20-point loss, you'd lose $1.400. For those wary of the NASDAQ's volatility, consider trading the micros for the NASDAQ, MANQ, where each point is valued at $2. Going long at $15,000 and witnessing a rise to $15,010 would result in a $1.20 profit, while a drop to $14,990 would mean a $1.20 loss. Lastly, there are tax advantages to trading futures over options, although I won't delve into that extensively in this video. If you're interested, a quick Google search should provide you with more detailed information on this topic. Now, let's discuss another crucial aspect of futures trading. The futures market operates 23 hours a day, closing at 5 p.m. Eastern Time and reopening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're someone with a full-time job, let's say a 9 to 5 in the Eastern Time Zone, you have the flexibility to wake up early around 6 a.m. Eastern Time. This provides you with a few hours to trade, make your profits, and then seamlessly transition into your workday. Alternatively, if you start your day early and finish work by 2, 3, or 4 o'clock, you can return home and still have a couple of hours available for futures trading. Now, on the flip side, if you're into trading options on SPY, Q, Tesla, Apple, or any other, the market is only open from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you can't trade during these hours, options trading becomes challenging. This is one reason why many individuals have shifted to futures trading, especially if they work a full-time job and can't commit to the typical trading hours. If you fall into this category, exploring futures might be a viable option due to its extended trading hours. When deciding between options and futures trading, your situation plays a pivotal role. If you're unable to be present from 9.30 to 4 o'clock, futures might be a more suitable choice. Personally, I find futures easier, primarily due to the point system. However, my mainstay is options trading as it aligns with my full-time commitment. It's crucial to assess your scenario. Sit down and determine which approach makes more sense for your trading style and lifestyle. If you're contemplating a funded account, I'd advise against it. I prefer trading with my own money on Thinkorswim. The funded account route seems sketchy to me, and since I don't comprehend it fully, I refrain from participating. If you decide to explore funded accounts or prop firms, do thorough research, especially considering recent news about scams in the industry. That concludes this video on futures. If you found value in this content, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell icon. It means the world to me. Feel free to explore the 800 plus free videos on my channel. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.